Hi, my name is Blake. I'm making this video to help parents who've discovered their unborn child has a genetic disorder similar to my child's. When I received the news from my wife, video testimonies I found online were tremendously invaluable to me. My daughter Lucy Joan was diagnosed with holoprosencephaly and trisomy 13. Over the course of the pregnancy, I kept my thoughts and feelings to myself because I was focused on taking care of and protecting my family. When the time came, I prepared a thorough speech which I gave at Lucy's funeral. I had a friend film it so I could put it online for others. However, my speech was the one part of the Mass that was not recorded. I took this as a sign that I'm to do something else, so here we are. I'm going to read my words of remembrance now from Lucy Jones' funeral, and I hope you find my wife and I's experience helpful on your journey. A wife that loses her husband is called a widow. A husband that loses his wife is called a widower. A child that loses its parents is called an orphan. But what are parents called that lose a child? Our culture hasn't come up with a common term for such a tragedy. It's the unnatural order of things. Lucy Joan Regal, our little saint, our powerful warrior of light, our daughter. We were so excited when we discovered we were pregnant. Months later, we were told she was medically complicated, diagnosed with trisomy 13 and holoprosencephaly. I was on the set of Supergirl in Canada at the time as we were shooting a dramatic scene in which the superhero couldn't save a building from collapsing into a hole in the ground. As I got the news, I fell in that hole. I was in the dark and lost. Hearing Phelan in tears on the phone crushed me. I went home and cried in the shower until I felt completely emptied of all energy and tears. And then I sat and listened to the song by Ike and Dola, which you heard during the communion meditation, the lyrics over and over, Come to the feast, all you wounded and weak. Come receive the bread of life. We are all dry bones, longing for a savior, waiting for the God of life to put us back together. And the memory of who I was fades away in the arms of love. Watch my fears come undone, like a thief on the run from the unrelenting heart of God. Those lyrics coupled with a homily I'd recently heard about not being able to control the stimulus, but being able, but being able to control the reaction, started to inform my mission and my duty. As my friend Shane so wonderfully said, my whole life had been leading up to this. This medically complicated child was mine and Phelan's daughter. We were chosen to be her parents. I wasn't gonna keep my head down. I was gonna raise it up and show the world how it's done. Doctors couldn't tell us if Lucy would live a minute, a day, a month, or a year outside the womb. Our worrying wouldn't add or subtract a day from Lucy's life. We are not the authors of life. We can make a body, not a soul. Only God can do that. And we had to let go and realize we aren't in control. Once we did this, we could focus on simply being her parents and loving her as much as humanly possible. All of our days are numbered, not just a child's with an extra chromosome. Whether any of us lives a day or a hundred years, it is merely a speck compared to the eternity we get together after this life. When I returned from Canada, my family and I embarked on the greatest summer, the summer of Lucy. We took our family of four to the NASCAR race, friends' birthday parties, the zoo, mass, restaurants, etc. Once the quarantine hit, Phelan loved to take Lucy to the beach and float in the water and play in the waves with her. Soak up the sun, go to the pool, jump off the diving board and swim with Boone. Boone connected with Lucy so much. He'd love to touch her through mom's stomach, talk to her, pretend to feed her and smile every time he said her name. Our friend's kids loved playing with Lucy. Lonnie would make gifts for Lucy. Sunny loved rubbing her priests loved blessing her. It was great to interact with folks that would celebrate the life in the womb. Phelan and Boone would make forts with Lucy, turn out the lights and place a flashlight to the stomach and view the light reflecting back from inside. At night, we'd gather and listen to Lucy's heartbeat with a stethoscope her grandpa Doug gave us. When you're given a special mission like this, every heartbeat becomes as magical sounding as the trumpets of heaven. Each beat a miracle. One of my favorite things to do was to press my face against Phelan's stomach and talk to Lucy and feel her answers in physical form as she used her feet and hands to respond. My favorite thing to do of all, though, was to watch my wife, Lucy's mother, glow like the sun with this pregnancy. Her joy, faith, and courage through each and every day was unreal. Lucy was born on August 9th, Papa Doug's birthday as well. She peacefully made her way to our arms with her hands in prayer. She passed in our arms and remained in them for the next 36 hours especially Phelan, who got the best sleep all year as she nestled Lucy to her chest on the outside for the first time, and they slept like two peaceful babies. 
Late at night, I held Lucy and received a mystical encounter from the Holy Queen who expressed her joyous gratitude, told me Lucy was with God and instructed me to thank Phelan. I'm simply and briefly telling this moment, but I promise you it was real. It was powerful and beyond description. The veil came down slightly and I can say I'm absolutely comfortable with eventually leaving this life for the next. The first night we got into bed without Lucy was a sadness like no other. We addressed the loss, but countered with the truth we know, and collectively said our good night, Lucy, before falling asleep as we did when she was physically with us. Thankfully, our God has provided us redemption from this suffering. We are to share Christ's life of being born, living, suffering, being redeemed, and resurrected. We follow in faith and hope carrying this cross we've been given. We are perfected through our suffering. To quote Scott Hahn, redemptive suffering is not an option for the super saints, the Mother Teresa's and the Joan of Arcs. Redemptive suffering, offering it up, carrying the cross represents the nuts and bolts of Christian living, the ABCs of Catholic morality, the sine qua non, that without which there is no heaven, that without which there can be no perfection for us. It was redemptive suffering that pulled me out of that hole in Canada. Christ got me out. Supergirl was busy in the makeup trailer. The hardest part of suffering for me and most is giving up control. But I am convinced that through life experience, the scriptures, and church teaching, that God accomplishes more redemptive value in me when I give up control than when I'm in control. Phelan can attest to the many times I declared one thing only to receive struggle instead and find out later what beautiful fruit it provided. We've begun seeing the amazing fruits of Lucy's life. She's a little mustard seed that will grow and evolve and profoundly change the world forever. Phelan and I are changed forever in positive ways. We have new hearts. Holding our first child, Boone, I felt he became the only thing that mattered in the world. Lucy was different. Holding your dead child, all of a sudden everything in the world matters. Everything. It's hard to explain, but I see so much miraculous beauty even in what many consider mundane. People have communicated to Phelan and I from all over the United States and from many other countries how much Lucy has impacted them, how her story, our story, has given them strength. Women who've kept their miscarriages and stillbirths secret have opened up their hearts and professed that witnessing Lucy's story has helped them shine healing light on trauma they were letting darken their past. No matter what kind of loss you have suffered, there is redemption. We were a little worried about how different Lucy would look. A worry we struggled with quelling, However, she came out and we saw heaven. She's perfect. By the time we'd looked at her for 36 hours, we'd look at people with noses and think, what is that weird protuberance on your face? We went to visit her at the mortuary several times and struggled to find a casting method that would provide corporal mercy and not potentially keep one of her cute little extra digits. Early on in my life, I never expected the moment where my wife, a mortician, and I would be trying to all carefully contort our bodies in the embalmed body of our daughter with a piece of square clay as we tried to get impressions of little delicate cold feet and hands. I also didn't expect this to be a moment of comfort and levity. Life is gnarly. And life is a gift. All of it. What a gift to be chosen to cradle Lucy's life. What a gift to be able to be impacted by her. What a gift to get to send her to heaven. What a gift to have an angel baby, a perfect soul shining down on my wife, our son, you and I. Lighting the way and praying that you let go of your fears, offer up your suffering and have the illuminated vision that life only matters because we die. And death is not the end. Feel the sunlight hit you today. That's Lucy our daughter. So what do you call parents that have lost a child? You call them mom and dad. We will never stop being Lucy's mom and dad, and we look forward to being together again in eternity. The only tragedy would have been never meeting Lucy at all. Lucy's soul may be gone, but our armor of God is strong. We don't let our enemies get the better of us. We carry our cross and find endless hope. We are the terror of demons. Lucy Joan Regal, light up the darkness. Lucy Joan Regal, pray for us. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.